Before that, though, here's Marty on a rail revolution that never quite got off the ground. In the 1970s, this remote corner of the Cambridgeshire Fens was at the heart of a space-age experiment. These concrete pillars at Sutton Galt are all that remain of a pioneering attempt to create the fastest transport system ever dreamed of, the tracked hovercraft, or hover train. It was visionary, a train that hovered above its track like a futuristic spacecraft and used a new kind of motor to accelerate to hundreds of miles an hour. These are the only three remaining visible parts of the test track on which the hover train was going to be run. It's a hover train, so presumably it's working like a hovercraft floating on a cushion of air then? Correct. They had 12 fans and they blew the air under very high pressure and that lifted the train off the track. The project was the brainchild of a superstar British inventor. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Eric Laithwaite. He made his name in the 60s when he developed a new type of motor. A linear electric motor is a very simple idea. It's just an ordinary electric motor which has been unrolled. Instead of going round and round, it ran in a straight line. It was this that powered the hover train. Let me show you how Lathwaite's motor worked. I've got some magnets here, like that, and I've lined them up in a long line here. So what I've effectively got is one long magnetic field. And I've got these two bits of metal here, which are going to be my rails. And this metal bar, this is going to be my train. And then all I need to do is attach a source of electricity and look at that. It rolls all the way up the end. The electricity creates a magnetic field around the bar and that interacts with my line of magnets in the track. This is just how Lathwaite's hover train was powered. And because there were no wheels, there was no friction making it smooth, silent and super fast. The dream was to have airline speed, so London to Edinburgh in 90 minutes, London to Birmingham in 20 minutes. The government invested five and a quarter million pounds, around half a billion in today's money. In tests, the train reached 104 miles an hour on just one mile of track. The potential was clear. That same train now rests at Peterborough's Rail World Wildlife Haven, where she's looked after by Brian Pierce. Here we have a research test vehicle 31, RTV 31 in all its glory. That's what it stands for. The, the, the hover train of the future. You see at the back here, we've got the three connections for the linear motor. That's where the electricity sort of went into the That's system. That's where the electricity came. That's where it picked up. You've got the hover pads at the top. 23 tonnes this way. And you could just pick tons. it up on air. Yeah. Every detail of the design was carefully thought out. It was incredible. All the lines were going to radiate from King's Cross, so the actual hover train would come into King's Cross and people would get off and get onto a conventional train and then inside, <laughs> what it was going to look like. That's a cross-section through yeah. 100, 100 passengers. 100 passengers and two crew, but they were just there for serving drinks. Lathwaite's project seemed right on track. But as you can probably tell by the fact that she's not zooming along a track near you, the story doesn't end well for this old girl. The project was beset by technical and financial problems. And there was stiff competition from British Rail's new high-speed trains, which ran on existing tracks. In 1973, the government pulled the plug. So it's a sad time then for, for the people who were working on it, I guess. Very sad, because they were geared up, they wanted to do it. It was a fantastic British invention. This display may seem like a lonely tribute to the hover train and the work of Eric Laithwaite, but it wasn't all in vain. His work lives on, and in Japan, a levitating train powered by linear motors holds the world passenger train speed record at a massive 375 miles an hour. And I can't help feeling that that would have made him proud. Indeed, I remember getting very excited about that back in the day on tomorrow as well. Yes. Back in the day. It was very James Bondy. Yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. It looked it? really cool. Yeah, yeah, that's what you'd have had on your way to the evil lair. Yeah. You'd have gone on you'd your go on around. your way to work to that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not a Bond villain. No, you look like one. Thank you. <laughs> 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 joke, joke, joke. <laughs> we just to remind you. <laughs>
<laughs> we'll be ce celebrating my James Bond, many people's James Bond, Sir Roger Moore, a little bit later. He is, uh, here he is with our very own Giles, who will be sharing his memories of the legendary actor who sadly died yesterday. Yeah, and if, like Giles, you were lucky enough to meet Sir Roger, we would love to hear from you. Send us your photographs and we'll show some of them later on. Uh, but before that, let's welcome tonight's first guest, our very own Bond girl, with a licence <laughs> to investigate. It's Good Gloria night. Honeypenny. I, I wish I <laughs> It's funny. So I was just going to say, I mean, Roger Moore is just such a handsome, oh, handsome definitely. man. Right up to the end, I mean, I, I saw.